Good morning. Welcome to day one of Shakespeare class. I'm looking forward to a good semester. I believe that for the most part, we should be able to get everybody to class. However, if there are days when you are ill or you have an extracurricular or there is some, you know, legitimate reason why you can't be in class, I will be recording these videos. I will be posting them on the uh, uh, YouTube uh, playlist and uh, you should be able to access most of the things you need uh, for that day. I'm guessing that these will be a little shorter and a little quicker than class, and you will miss out on the discussion, but I think that these will be an adequate substitute in lieu of Zoom, which is something I just have not had a lot of good luck with, and so I think I'm just going to try this instead of Zoom uh, for, the, for the semester. Quick reminder that masks are required. I think that there are a couple of reasons for that. Number one, um, you know, the nation approached 400,000 deaths. We have some new strains. Um, number two, I am not 10 feet tall and bulletproof. Uh, and number three, I'm well over the age of 60 and I'm a little bit paranoid. So I will be asking people to wear the mask properly, to cover their nose, to cover their mouth. Um, off on the right, you'll see the... Uh, four of the masks that my wife has sewn me. I think I have three or four others. Uh, they're all going to look the same. However, I just want you to know that I do have multiple masks. I do wash them. I am going to be kind of hardcore about people wearing masks. I'm going to try to make sure that the masks I wear are as safe as possible. If there's a problem, the syllabus has this information as well, but contact Jane Aarons, uh, the Director of Student Support and Disability Service. The basics for this class are all going to be on D2L. And if you hit the class page for D2L under the getting started, you'll see that the YouTube playlist is there already. You will see that the syllabus is online already. I will be putting all of the assignments right underneath that. I can guarantee you that the YouTube playlist will always be at the top. And so you, all you need to do if you're missing class is check on the YouTube, click on the YouTube playlist, look for the date of the class, and go from there. Um, and like I said, all the assignments, the syllabus is there. Uh, when I talk about the presentation, uh, the rubric will be there. Everything you need should be in D2L. If there's some reason where I can't make it to class, or if there are other little emergencies, I think all of you are familiar with D2L, uh, a little bit further down the page uh, and off to the right, there's a news section. I will try to update people with the news on there. And I will also try to uh, send out emails uh, through D2L to let people know if there's some important change. Step one, I'm just going to reiterate. Step one, please check D2L first and then we'll go from there. The textbook we're using is the Bedford Shakespeare. I apologize for the cost, but it's tough to do a Shakespeare anthology cheaply, and it's tough to do uh, versions of the plays that everybody can get uh, cheaply as well. We're going to be doing the seven plays you see there, Julius Caesar, Othello, Macbeth, King Lear, uh, Twelfth Night, Measure for Measure, and Henry IV. This is a survey class. And a survey class means I want to go over a wide sampling of Shakespeare's works. I think it's important to do a comedy, uh, to do some history, uh, to do the tragedies. I think it's important to cover some of the works that may be taught in high school. For example, Caesar, Macbeth, Othello are all plays that uh, are taught in South Dakota high schools. And I think it's important if anyone's going into teaching to at least have a little bit of background about uh, you know, the plays that are taught there. I will try to make some suggestions about what one can do uh, while teaching those plays. Um, I spent a lot of years in the high school classroom, so I think I can add a little bit there. I also want to avoid works that are overdone. For example, Hamlet, I'm guessing is over, you know, is done in every high school. All of you may have read it uh, a couple of times already. Uh, same with Romeo and Juliet, uh, a play that I think is overrated. And I want to try to answer the basic question, why bother? All right. Why bother with something that
that was written over 400 years ago, that was performed over 400 years ago. Since I'm on the subject of why bother, um, and I'm not sure why the slides went in that order, I apologize, I'm jumping around a little bit. All of your long written assignments and all of your daily writings are gonna be done in Google Drive folders. And one of those prompts someplace along the line might be why bother. I think that was the segue I was looking for. Um, but anyway, step one, go to drive.google.com. It's important that you go to drive, not docs. Drive. You log in with the Mount Marty credentials. Then you click on shared with me. Shared with me will be in a column on the left about halfway down. There'll be a folder with your name and the class you're taking for me. So it'll be, you know, Leo Collis uh, Shakespeare. All right. You'll click on that and uh, it will say add shortcut to my drive, add the shortcut. Then you go back and you click on the my drive, which is just up in that same column on the top. You find and you open the appropriate folders. Uh, the folders I have shared with you have some subfolders with them. Uh, you open the daily writing folder, you click on new, you click on the Google Doc, you name the document, you do the assignment. If you're doing an essay, you open the essays folder or the formal writings folder. I can't remember what I titled them. And again, you do the assignment. If you have questions about setting up the folders or using the folders, there will be a step-by-step -step posted uh, again so that you can look at it. And there will be a video on the playlist so that you can see it happen. Uh, I'll walk you through it kind of step by step. Once you have set up the folders, you go to the Google Drive, you log in, you open the folder, you create the new doc, you do the assignment. You don't have to go to the getting started tab. You don't have to go to the uh, shared with me tab because everything will be on that folder. And you just open it and go with there. Okay. Again, if you have questions, watch the video. It'll be in the YouTube playlist. I'm using this for both Comp 104 and Shakespeare. It's going to be in both playlists. Open the correct folder before creating the document. Uh, don't create a new folder for your assignments and share it with me. Uh, if you absolutely insist on using Word, you can open the folder, uh, upload a Word document, um, all the comments should come through. Everything should work fine. If I make a comment on your paper and you've got questions, feel free to ask those questions. But please, please don't resolve the comments. Uh, all that does is pollute my email, bo email box with a bunch of stuff. And I would just prefer not to have that happen. Okay. To practice this, we're going to do our first daily writing. So take some time, go through the step-by-steps, create a document in the daily writing folder. Name the document with the date and your last name. For example, today is the 20th of January, 2021. So 1 slash 2021, your last name. My last name's Collis, so it'd be 1 slash 21 Collis. And then take a few minutes and answer the questions. What do you know about Shakespeare or his works? What plays have you read or seen performed? And why did you take this class? Since I'm doing the same thing in class as I would be doing, as we're doing here, if you're not in class, please have this daily writing completed by 11 a.m. I'll be using this as part of the uh, attendance. I will also be asking people to make a comment in the comments section uh, below the video about attendance in order for me to take attendance. So please make sure you do both parts, okay? Grading, essays are 50% of the grade, quizzes are 25% of the grade, the daily writings are 15, and the presentation is 10. Uh, we will talk about each of those at the appropriate time. Um, I will say right now that daily writings are basically, if you can do it, if you get it done and you don't swear at me in the daily writing, it'll be pretty hard not to get full credit. 
Take it seriously. The title of the class is Shakespeare's Drama, not Shakespeare's Plays. And I think it's important to set up the distinction here. What's the difference between a drama and a play? A play is a theatrical production. A drama is written literature. Dramas are meant to be read. Plays are meant to be seen. And look, let's be honest. Shakespeare wrote these plays to be seen on stage. He did not have any idea that these plays were going to be seen 400 years from now. We'll talk about Shakespeare being meta in Julius Caesar, for example, where people are going to talk about reenacting the death of Caesar centuries later. But that was meta to the idea of the tragedy of Julius Caesar. That was not Shakespeare talking about students in Yankton, South Dakota, reading his play in 2021. But I do think it's important to understand the distinction between the drama versus the play. We're going to be reading the plays um, more than we're going to be watching anything. I think there are a couple of things to go to the why bother question that I mentioned earlier. First of all, the world that students get sent in is permeated with Shakespeare's language and stories. Jealousy is a green-eyed monster comes from Shakespeare. Over break, I read a book entitled Code Girls. Code Girls is about the women who helped break the Nazi code in the United States and who also broke the Japanese codes uh, that allowed the United States to uh, basically destroy the Japanese Navy. One of the first people who was influential in setting that up read Shakespeare for codes that proved that Shakespeare did not write the plays. We solved the Japanese and Nazi codes in part because people were so interested in Shakespeare and believed that Shakespeare didn't write his plays, that they tried to break the codes inside the plays. And people high up in that circle were also high up in the idea of, or in the act of breaking that. Second of all, I think it's important to understand that there's some safety in looking at Shakespeare's plays. This is a quote from C.S. Lewis. He talked about the idea that two heads are better than one because they are unlikely to go wrong in the same direction. Books of the future will be as good or corrective as books of the past, but unfortunately we cannot get at them. What Lewis is trying to say is that when we read contemporary fiction or we read contemporary nonfiction, we are soaked in the moment and we are accepting unchallenged assumptions because there are assumptions that we all make. Shakespeare makes a whole different set of assumptions about things like race, gender, power, and I think I've got those all on the slide in a minute or two. By looking at his assumptions, we challenge ours. I don't think we have to agree with Shakespeare, and that's the last point here. I don't think we have to agree with him at all. I think what we need to do is negotiate with this past, bring our points of view to the table, accept the challenge that Shakespeare's points of view and the Elizabethan era points of view bring to the table and negotiate. Doesn't mean we have to surrender when we negotiate, but I think we have to negotiate with this past. As I mentioned, there's a lot of thematic elements in Shakespeare, the nature of power, the abuse of power, how he treats his female characters how the era treated the female characters, and the idea of appearance and reality, both in the idea of who these people appear to be versus who these people are, and the idea of gender. And we're also going to deal with this idea of fate versus free will. We are going to deal with this idea of the supernatural and how one accepts the supernatural, 
versus how one accepts the idea of science. I think it's important to understand that Shakespeare was writing his plays a century before the Salem witch trials. The assumption of the supernatural being out and about, or the assumption that night air was dark and contained bad humors that could harm people, was an assumption he made. It's not necessarily an assumption we as readers are going to make, and we're going to have to negotiate with that as we go through and read. If you're not in the classroom, take a minute and answer the following question. A lot of people in the classroom are going to discuss this. If you're not in the classroom, answer it in the comments below. Which contemporary author, playwright, film, or television series should people study 400 years from now? Explain why. Give me two or three sentences. This does not have to be a doctoral dissertation by any stretch of the matter. Just give me two or three sentences that explain who you think should be there. Finally, to sum up, if you have questions, check D2L in the syllabus. Please communicate with me. Send me an email. The office hours are in the syllabus. The uh, phone number for the office is in the syllabus. Um, all of that. But if, you, if there's a problem, please communicate. Please reach out. I will do my best to get back to you. Keep up with the reading. Um, these plays are relatively short, and we're spending four, five, six, seven class days, depending on the play. So try to keep up with the reading. Expect to write in class every day. And remember, whether you're in class or not, you're responsible for everything. I'm going to try to do my best to make sure that I have that video up by 8 a.m. Um, every class day. And if you can't be in class for whatever reason, um, watch the video. All of those assignments will have a comment, and many of them will also have something in the folder. Um, if you have any questions, please shoot me an email. And uh, if you couldn't be in class today, I hope to be able to see you on Friday. Have a good one.